I've been asked to uh, show people the new Radio Master, or not the new, uh, the Radio Master Zorro and the Edge TX software. From my point of view, now my point of view is one who doesn't really know and understand these things. Uh, I'm a bit of a pleb when it comes to radio gear. Um, I use them on small radio controlled vehicles, not on aircraft. Um, so anyway, my take, um, this transmitter, very nice little transmitter, uh, all the bells and whistles, uh, lots of useful switches which can be assigned to channels um, uh, wheels, buttons for different channels, uh, scrolls, um, all the rest, which we'll come to shortly. Uh, in the back we have two small batteries. They're a bit smaller than one would like. However, uh, very importantly, there is a USB-C connector there that is both for charging the batteries and also you can strap on a power pack, be it another battery or something like that, and plug that into the USB-C for uh, extended battery life, which is really, really useful. Uh, so it's a nice transmitter, feels good in the hand, um, 120 quid. Uh, good value for money, I think. Uh, incidentally, this you can see is unsprung like this. This is how it arrives. Um, there are four holes, four very small holes at the back here. One, two, three, four. If you want this uh, sprung, like this one is, if you want this sprung, you need a very, very small Allen key in this hole here and unwind the screw in there and uh, that will uh, allow the spring that is already in there to uh, come to life and engage with uh, this pot and uh, you then get springing in this one as uh, you know, so so all four functions become properly sprung. Um, it's quite easy to do. You just need to either have or make uh, a very small size Allen key to, to do that. So that's that. Um, turning on, press and hold. Welcome to Edge TX. Switch warning. Uh, press any key. Right, now I need you to be able to see the display for this, which is going to be dodgy, but there we go. You can see it's come up with the model that's already loaded, Volvo F12. Um, now, here we have a model, system, return, page, or page right, page forward, page back, and this is your scroll button and then you you press it to to enter what you're scrolling on and this is telemetry we don't bother with telemetry uh, so we're on Volvo F12 uh, first things first is we want to bind it to the model I've already done this I'm just going to show you in the menu uh, so we press model and that's the menu that comes up and you can see that the Volvo F12 is already highlighted otherwise we would use the scroll to uh, to go on uh, to highlight the model we want but we're already on it and then uh, using the page right or page forward button we're going to uh, one click gets us to the setup page. Setup page is what we want. 
Um, now this is a long page, so we're just going to scroll down and we're going to scroll down past timers, timer 1, timer 2, timer 3, trims, trim reverse, etc, checklists, warnings, pots, beeps, I'm sure you can turn all those beeps off, but right, and then we get to internal RF and mode. Now, uh, I've got it showing multi. That is something... Um, whoops, wrong. Uh, return. Uh, multi. There are, um, you want to make sure that it is on multi. And of course, my perspective on this is uh, it is controlling the Deltang uh, receivers, um, which are uh, DSM. Now, uh, when you first get it, it will not be showing DSM. It'll be showing something completely unknown. So as soon as under our internal RF, you get to type, you need to click on whatever is showing in that box. And uh, once you click on it, whoops, and I can't even do that. Um, um, click on it and you can go around uh, and you can see there's all sorts of what is to me rubbish. I recognise some of them, Fly Sky, Esky, Esky, um, all sorts of things that mean nothing to me. Um, uh, and then there's several DSMs, DM002, Devo, uh, DSMRX, but we just want DSM. Now I know that um, uh, uh, the uh, Deltang receives a DSM-2, uh, but just click on DSM and we click onto it with the, by pressing down on the scroll, DSM, subtype. We don't actually know what subtype it is, so we uh, click on that box again and we go to auto, like that, and uh, we've got auto there, and that, that hopefully means that it will sort it out itself in conjunction with the receiver, and then receiver, uh, there's a double O in that first box, and then BND for bind in that one. And uh, at this point, we power up the receiver, and when we get the high speed flashing, we will then press that and allow it to bind. And it doesn't take very long. And as soon as it's finished binding, we can come out of uh, that and back to our home page and. Uh, then we're uh, back in our normal uh, control page, if you see what I mean. And we should be able to drive the thing around. All well and good. Now, one of the points of having a, a highfalutin um, transmitter like this is we can make it do nice and useful things. Very important. So, um, we want to be able to reverse the servo sometimes um, if uh, we've had to fit it in the, in the model in an awkward orientation. We may need to reverse it. So, uh, uh, press model again to go to that page and then page forward, that's the setup page, we've already bound using that one, 
not heli or flights um, or even inputs uh, that's mixes that's very useful we'll come back to that in a minute but outputs um, outputs page we want um, now just to show you uh, I'll click on channel one edit right uh, all there's all sorts of things you can change here I'm not interested in any of them at the moment except direction direction there if I click on that you get INV for invert that inverts the direction so uh, you've just clicked on that for invert and if you return out of that uh, your job is done and your servo or your motor um, will uh, run in the opposite direction so that's very very useful very easy now I'm just going to turn it back again leaving it blank and that's um, now driving uh, in the uh, original ordained direction I want to come out of that oops sorry I want to come back out of that page and uh, leave it how it was but that's um, that's the page it's the outputs page which is 7 of 12 uh, according to uh, sorry no it's uh, channels 7 of 12 you can uh, scroll down to look at all the other channels it will control frightening number um, so return I want to come back out of that so that's how you reverse the servos or reverse your motor very very useful um, the other thing I want to show you how to do is to slow uh, your servos down which I do for steering I always like to um, sl slow the steering down but also uh, I want to slow acceleration and deacceleration down um, uh, and that you know uh, kind of like DCC you can alter the uh, acceleration deacceleration you can do it with this as well now I've been able to do that on the uh, deviation software but I can do it with this I <laughs> took me some time to work out how to do it but I can do it so we're doing the same uh, so I got back to the uh, original uh, menu and now just going to scroll through again page uh, forward heli setup flight modes inputs mixes now mixes uh, if I remember rightly is where it is um, and uh, I'm actually going to do this for real and it's channel 3 I want um, which I know is the uh, the the motor uh, so I've selected channel 3 uh, long press for edit and edit right there we go um, now you can oops pause hang on my apologies for that the doorbell went with the delivery so uh, yes you can see here delay up delay down now that could be very useful for some things can't quite think what at the moment but it's good to know it's there now slow up slow down that's what we're looking for um, that uh, equates to acceleration so what I'm going to do I'm going to put a, a two second oops a two seconds uh, slow on 
on it both up and down like that. And that'll just take the edge off acceleration and deacceleration. So that is in the mixes page. And I'm just going to return out of that uh, mixes and you can see there's an S appeared there to show I've uh, slowed the thing down and that is how you do some of the basic stuff on Edge TX. Now, I think uh, oh, you can also vary the curve of acceleration and all that. Uh, it's suffice to say, it's a very sophisticated program and it'll do all sorts of things and you can assign outputs to different uh, channels and, and, and all sorts. It's very, very sophisticated. It's a great deal more sophisticated than I am. Um, there's no question that uh, it can probably do absolutely anything one wants. Um, but I think you've also got to have a somewhat clearer brain uh, than, than I have. But that's how to do the uh, the minimum uh, or, or not the minimum the things that we really really want to do the other thing I would say is that uh, what you can do very very usefully is for things like the tipper is you can uh, program the tipping mechanism uh, like the tipping trailer for instance to a channel like channel 7 and you can uh, assign it to one of these switches and take it away from the joystick altogether um, and that means you you don't operate it by accident and you don't have it creeping and you can have precise control over it and that's what I've done on the tipping trailer and that makes a lot of difference and it's much much easier so there you go i think it's a good thing um, and when you find out find out how to do these things because it doesn't come with a manual you can find these things on the internet but it doesn't come with a manual um, when you find out how to do these things and you get your head around it it's really very good, uh, but uh, it's not, can I say it's not user friendly from that programming point of view if you're coming from basics. Do I recommend it? On the whole, yes I do. I think it's, it's very good and I think the transmitter itself is uh, an excellent beast um, but there we go that's that's where we are I hope that's uh, hope that's useful